as Zurich in the UK with about 5,000 colleagues, a real diverse mix of technical, professional colleagues, and we're spread out all across the UK. So we'd had a long-standing learning and development outsourcing arrangement, but it hadn't really evolved with the times. Our business context was changing and we felt the relationship was very transactional. So we were going out to look for a provider that was a real cultural fit with us, really thought about the quality outcomes of the learning and development, and of course the commerciality was part of that. And I think the other thing that we were really looking for was the ability to bring the technology and an offering that was moving with the times to the table. So we had played around with digital content and we had some means of accessing that through intranets and the like, but really colleagues are looking for L&D content that they can access in the same way that we do access technology in our everyday lives. And the real bonus was that Hemsey Fraser were bringing a learning hub that was ready to implement. I think it was really interesting that even when we were in the tender meeting with Hemsey Fraser, so the very first time that we had met them, the team just felt like an extension of our team. So I think the cultural fit was enormous. Um, they were saying things that we'd internally said to ourselves around our priorities and our goals. So we just felt the fit was perfect. As well as that, um, I think the really caring about quality outcomes. So this is never going to be um, purely about commerciality, although that, you know, that came along with the package as well. I think working with Hemsey Fraser right from the offset was, has just been really smooth. So it's hard to remember back, but when we first were putting the partnership together, there was so much involved in setting that up as a project and all the systems integration, and it just felt like a partnership from the off. So we had a big project team and they were always able to face um, dilemmas that we had in a pragmatic way and work with lots of colleagues directly in the business. So their IT people were talking to our IT people, um, their governance expert would talk to our governance expert. So it just felt smooth for something that you know, could have been quite unwieldy. Um, I think since then we, you know, we have SLAs as you'd expect, but it just doesn't feel like we manage the relationship through our SLAs. We never get a report of SLAs and see a surprise. Uh, we don't ever see an SLA and think um, there's a problem to resolve because if there was something to resolve, we would have had the conversation much earlier. Um, it's all about the relationship um, and not really managing through a contract. We've just been continually pleased with everything that um, has come to the table. So everything from the efficiency of administration processes to bringing some really new thinking to the table. So introducing us to new suppliers who are innovative and have taken new approaches and who we've now got really interesting relationships with. So in terms of the commercials, um, we are saving about 15% on external suppliers, even when we have dealt with those suppliers in the past, so prior to the Hemsley Fraser relationship, even when it's big global L&D suppliers. And so the service is paying for itself. So when we came to Hemsley Fraser, we had played around with digital content and we had things that were built on an intranet. And suddenly they had this learning hub that was just like the technology that we use in our everyday life. So it had you know, the ability to rate content, to share content, chunked into playlists or behind tiles in the way that you would consume from other brands that you use in your everyday life. So this was exactly what we were looking for in terms of taking our digital um, content to the next level and being able to have a one-stop shop for um, our colleagues to self-serve their learning at the right point in time and to be mobile enabled so to be able to look at learning content at home on the train so implementing the hub has been the sort of backbone to how we've gone forward with Hemsey Fraser um, and the functionality continues to improve so now the ability to push content that's relevant to people and constantly um, being able to look at new functionality that, that um, evolves so that's one of the really key deliverables. 
We've also moved a lot of our technical training onto digital content. So we use something called a fluid book, which essentially is like an ebook, but it has lots of different types of assets in. So it could have videos and external content linked in there and quizzes. And we've moved a lot of our technical content onto fluid books and they have been really uh, well received by the business. So as well as Fluid Books, we've moved all of our program administration to Hemsley Fraser. So existing programs like graduate programs, management development curriculum. So all of the logistics and admin, bookings, joining instructions, making sure courses are full. All of that administration now is done by Hemsley Fraser and it's, it just works in a really smooth way and means that our team can focus on different strategic priorities. One of the big things that we're working on is around upskilling our colleagues from a digital point of view. So we are running a digital course, a programme with a number of providers and that is all sourced through Hemsey Fraser. And we're also doing a producing a demystifying digital fluid book. As I've mentioned, fluid books have gone down as a really popular method with our business of delivering content across the country in a, in a sort of digestible way. So Hemsley have helped us source some really credible senior coaches to work with our leadership teams. And we're running an induction day together with Hemsley, in fact, at Hemsley's premises, so that we can really engage this group of people in the ways of Zurich, our models, and um, talk about some of the challenges and the things that we want to work together with them on. From a commercial point of view, Saving 15% on our external spend with suppliers is obviously significant because it means that we can reinvest that money in our overall learning and development priorities. So that's a really key commercial thing. It means the service pays for itself. Aside to that, it's been the thought, partnership and innovation that is brought to the table. The SLAs go without saying. They are consistently green. In fact, we've rewritten the SLAs because they're consistently green because we feel we should challenge ourselves as a partnership to keep um, improving. And I think um, obviously the specific L&D interventions that we've worked on, each time we agree, you know, what are the specific measures on those and, and each time they've been met. So that might be something like a net promoter score. The actual tangible deliverables from each project um, are measured and, and we're really, really happy with the content um, and the outcomes. I think some of the things that I'd really recommend about Hemsley Fraser are, they are real L&D experts. So being thought partners in how we solve some of the problems, issues, goals, um, strategic priorities that we're working on, they always bring something to the table. I think the fact that we have now access to really forward thinking capabilities in terms of the digital hub and the way that that continues to evolve with more functionality and it has to be a core part of how any organisation offers up their L&D content today. And I think finally, it's really the trust and integrity in the relationship and being able to know that the relationship is really based on that and not run through a contract and SLAs and that all problems will be you know, dealt with in a pragmatic way and our overall success is reliant on each other. It's really easy to make assumptions about um, which external suppliers would work via Hemsey Fraser, but I think one, there was a really pragmatic approach taken by Hemsey Fraser, so straight from the off they were saying, which providers do you use that you are really happy with and you don't want to change, you don't even want to have a discussion about changing? Which providers do you want to change? And which providers are you just open to options to see what's out there in the market? And that approach, I think, um, was really successful with us, but it's clearly been really successful with bringing new providers on board and our existing providers. They were able to deal with everyone from a niche player to a global L&D organisation and still get economy of scale discounts for us has been um, an unexpected benefit. I think it's just had a further reach than we thought. One of the other unexpected benefits would be that there's been times when they've actually been able to help our global organisation. So whilst the Hemsley Fraser relationship and service is about our UK business, our global organisation has specific needs and worked on specific projects um, where Hemsley Fraser has been able to help them out. And they've seen the work they've done with us that's led to those conversations. I think going forward, 
we want more of the same type of relationship with Hemsley. So this has really evolved into a partnership now. And we talk about that whenever we meet. We talk about our goals and we look at them as if we were one team. So we just want more of the same, really. You know, we've got new challenges to work on, but definitely the same approach to those challenges and continuing to evolve the learning landscape. So the hub, for example, you know, there's new functionality and ideas that we have all the time because technology is evolving. So continuing to be at the forefront of that is important as well.